were just talking about this when the pool report came out for the last couple of minutes. Essentially, the NBA was like, hey, the Mavericks got jobbed on a no call on that offensive foul. Do you ever feel like or did you ever feel like when you were playing that the refs either talk to you or they're like, hey, we're going to make that up to you. No, we kind of screwed <laughs> that up. We're going to fix it for you. Yeah, yeah, that happens. That happens when you have a relationship with a referee. I mean, sometimes you go through that whole thing. You bend down next to them and say, and say damn it, Billy, you missed that call. And they'll say, yeah, 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 I did. I didn't, I didn't do that. But, but you have to have a relationship with them where they know that they blew something. And uh, they're not going to make it up later on in a, in a make a bad call against somebody else. But they'll, they'll sure watch you closely and that kind of a thing to, uh, to get those two points back or that opportunity back to make it a lot more even. But it's just the way it goes. Sometimes when that call goes through, though, sometimes it just stays a bad call the rest of the time. Mm. So it just, it just all depends. Row in your career with the Mavericks and also playoff basketball with the Knicks, can you remember a game similar to the Mavs where you guys were up with less than a minute to go and felt like you kind of you lost a critical game in a series? Oh my goodness, I don't know about a, I don't know about a series. Uh, I don't remember any playoff situations where you know you you kind of don't have the the correct moves at the last at the last thirty nine seconds and uh, lose a four lose a four point lead and making a couple of mistakes as far as that's concerned by fouling and then. And then uh, missing free throws, uh, and then then the team comes back down and scores. I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything like that. But what's important about all of that stuff is to is to be able to learn. You know, we got a young team. We got a team that was just adjusting again back to Luca coming back on the floor, which is our great superstar, a real heck of a basketball player, and uh, one of the top four, top five players in the league today. And the important thing is that everybody has to adjust now. Now it's two to two. Everybody focus back in now on Luca leading instead of Brunson and uh, having the opportunity now to bring your wares focusing into the game. Luca's back. Let's get with it. What do I do and what can I do to help this basketball team when the time comes with Luca leading? So uh, that's what you have to think about now when the playoff time comes to no more sucking the thumb, get rid of the lollipop and uh, get on out there and, 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 and produce as to what you do, then do it because it's time is, is like now. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's how you have to play it. Would a motivational speech at this stage be a giant waste of time because everybody knows exactly the stakes and you're like, I got it? No, uh, it's just a redirection of thought. Uh, you have to have motivational – you don't have to have a motivational speech and all that kind of stuff, but you have to have a directional thought of uplifting and confidence to making sure players know that they're open to do what they need to do and to being able to be aggressive and not passive in what you're doing and, and do it as a team, you know, for Kleber to – to t- think about his shots. Once the ball comes in a pick and roll and he's wide the heck open, take the shot with confidence for and on behalf of the team and get those points and being able to do that. Driving to the basket to go through people. You know what I mean? When, when big fellas in, the, in there too, you know, you go at his chest. Since he wants to jump up there, go at his, go at his chest or try, to, or try to break some hands at the rim. It's just a matter of being aggressive, doing what you do, and trying to do that for and on behalf of the team. But there's no time here for double thinking and everything. If you can shoot a J, then shoot the J and put the ball in the hole, go to the basket and go hard. Those are the kind of things that you have to uh, making sure that everybody knows that it's not just looking at Luca and not just looking at Brunson and not just looking at one person. It's all of us. So bring, bring what you do best to the floor and execute. Dallas Maverick, great Rolando Blackman joining us right now. When it comes to the adjustment to Luca after playing uh, the three games without him, did you feel like that's why the first half – was so out of sorts, and they readjusted and were playing together as a team in the third quarter? Of course. Of course. Remember, everybody has to remember, this is not a computer chip where you run down or a light bulb where you run down to the Walmart and go grab it and throw it up throw it up in the light bulb and you, everything just turns on automatically. These are human beings working together. You know, after the first loss, after the first game loss, and then uh, you lose Luca, and then you turned into a new leader. A new leader came into to view. And all of a sudden, Brunson filled the bill, filled the job, put the, put the whole thing together, inspired everybody to play well and to do the job, and they did that. And everybody came in in an aggressive fold. Now you got your superstar back, and there are human adjustments to make with that kind of a thing, to being able to play the game. But it's all positive because you're adding someone who, who can really play the game and can really lead. So everybody has to find themselves once again. But once again, it's not up to Brunson to change the way he plays except that Luca is going to be giving him the ball now at certain times, and certain times he's going to have the ball in his hands. It's still up to everybody else, Jim Woody, to use his skills to drive, to shoot, 
to being able to have Bullock put the ball up in the air and shoot the basketball well, Cleaver to, to hit shots and being able to do the job in that kind of a way, and uh, everybody else to being able to play the game and, um, and get on out there. The biggest thing for me is to being able to solve and, and get the rebounding. The Mavericks have been doing a good job of playing the super defense, just to no out-rebounding, get on those boards after you do that and, and, and then have more opportunities at the offensive end. Yeah, there were some some moments, Rolando, that that were it was kind of like, oh my gosh, they can't stop anything that's going at the basket right now. What adjustment would you make for for this specific team without a you know a, a Rudy Gobert sized player to say, hey, we have to be able to try and squeeze something out of either rebounds? What adjustments would you make here? No, I think the Mavericks are doing a fantastic job in making sure that they don't get a whole bunch of three point shots up and keeping it in the two point range and having the opportunity to close down the drive, keeping people in front of you, but making sure that you don't just have open three-point shots going up and down. The biggest thing with the scramble is always to have the in- internal rebounding to take place. You've got to go get that ball off of that good work that you did defensively. And if they can do that, they'll have the opportunity to continue in, in that way too. Being aggressive is going to be very important in this game, to being able to drive to the basket and collapse that Utah defense so that our open shooters can collect good shots, and hopefully tonight they'll be hitting and they'll be able to, to being able to get that done. But um, it's going to be a special game, but we have to just stay aggressive just as we've been and making sure now that we get those good shots, rebound the basketball, and hit shots. Ro, my father says that Spencer Dinwiddie reminds him of a little bit of you. Dinwiddie has been struggling in this series. What would get Dinwiddie going in game five? But what what gets him? You no, know, listen. What gets Dinwiddie going is that you have uh, you have uh, sometimes you have a Brunson on the floor, sometimes you have a Luca on the floor, and the important factor is that what he has to know and realize is that a lot of times he has a one on one, he has a one on one guy in front of him. Please, 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 cook and baste that guy in front of you. The, the guy that's in front of you cannot guard Dinwiddie, no matter who it is that Utah has. No one, no one can stop stay stay in front of him and being able to attack the basket. I would, I would be in attack mode like crazy to, be, to go to the basket, to shoot shots, and when they collapse on you, to be able to give somebody else a good shot in that way. But stay in an aggressive mode. He's not, he is not a point guard and is not out there to point guard the place and try to set up offense and all that kind of stuff. He, he has to be an attack dog, and with that comes his power to being able now to get boy points on the board and beautifully make that pass when they double you. you got a nice pass and somebody else, being able to put that ball in the hole, but you've got to be able to attack, not not be a point guard because you're not that. Okay, so in the late seconds, minutes of the game, Luca, I, watching him in the Olympics, he's unselfish. He's willing to pass and let his teammate be the big shot guy. Do you want him to be a little more aggressive there late, or do you want him to continue doing that? Find the open shot for the for his teammates. Yeah, because there's always that discrepancy like LeBron, he, oh, he passes too much. He's, he's unwilling to take the big shot. I don't think Luca's unwilling to do that, but what would you rather him be doing? Yeah, and, and also you have to understand that people are, you know, it's a, some, sometimes people just get off into that press thing and just really make, make really stupid remarks about LeBron and all those types of things too. He's a, he's a, he's a hell of a player and, and people are just haters. That's all. You're just a hater and you know it's just call, call yourself what you are. So that's about it. So when when, when a guy like that, LeBron, makes a play because he's getting double teams, because another person is open to rely on your teammates. When Luka takes the ball to the basket and goes one-on-one and starts doing his dribbling and he's one-on-one, great. Doing his step-back threes, excellent. But once he gets, draws another person to him, he's got to have the, 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 the mental mentality, which he does, to making great plays. He, he makes the pass to you. That's your responsibility now as another pro on the floor to make the play now, whether it's another repenetration, another pass, or making the shot. He has to be able to get you a clear shot. And if he can do that, then it's up to you to make the, make the play. That's, what, that's what's important about playing basketball in the NBA. You know, he's not supposed to take a shot out of a double team and take a bad shot. But once he gives you the ball, he realizes that, boom, they've doubled me. Boom, here you have the ball. You've got to be able to do something with that basketball and, uh, and make the team better because he's already made you better by getting you the ball with no one on you. Now, I absolutely have to know, did you have a list of haters from when you were playing that were your personal list of haters, and would you like to list any of them off right now? (laughs) 
I don't have, you know, when you talk about, when you talk about, when you guys talk about LeBron and all those types of things and you do that, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just interesting because he's a, he's a, he is one hell of a player that's, uh, that's, I mean, when you, when you get to what, nine finals in a row, come on now, you know, come on now, you know, now you know you're a hater now, come on now. It's a, it's a situation <laughs> with that, but you know you're a hater now. You got, you got a guy that's, that's been doing that high level play and is getting to a, to a, to a level where no one else has gone in that kind of a situation. It's a beautiful thing, but when you get out on the floor, like for me, for instance, in that same situation, is that you've got to be, just be able to apply yourself. What do you do well? How can you help the basketball team? Mines with the catch and shoot, or to go one on one, to be able to collapse defense, or or drill the sh- or drill or drill that shot. That's the that's the important factor. But you've got to be aggressive in what you're doing to try to help the team. And Luca, going back to him, does exactly what it takes to help the team with all the beauty of his talent. You know, you everybody wishes they could play with a guy like that because at the end of the day. He's going to collapse that defense, and you've got to be ready to apply yourself when that ball comes to you with a confidence and aggression to being able to make the play of what he's giving you, which is which is the beauty of having a nice shot, which I, which I love. Man, I could have got some more points playing with people like that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be mad, bro. Don't be mad. Ro, I know that you have to win two more games to win this series. Do you feel like the winner of tonight's game wins the series? No, I feel like I don't. I feel like I feel like the, the the team that plays the most consistent throughout the next two out of three is going to win this. Is going to win the series simply because these teams are matched in the, in, a, in a very very different different way. They've got they've got scores over there on their side of the court. We've got scores on our star. Our star is back. We're going to have to make sure and, and get in on the rebounding of there, and not get outboarded by twenty or fifteen or give them extra shots. But whoever can be the most consistent in applying their defense rebounding. And hitting open shots—that's the that's the important factor of the, of the whole situation. After you do your job, so it's just going to be the most consistent team. This this thing could end in six, or could, could might might be able to go to seven, which I which I hope my my Mavs win. All right, Rose. So we're not playing, so we can look uh, forward to this. Are you looking at the Phoenix New Orleans series mm-hmm. as wow? Are we going to be playing Phoenix if we win this one? Yeah, but you don't know. Once again, once once you have players out. This is not, like I always say, and I love to say it to people so they understand, this is not about you talking. It's not about your computer. It's not about changing a light bulb. You, you're actually missing a player. You're, 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 missing, you're, you're missing a guy that can score 31 points a game in, 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 at any moment in time. So when, when you have those kinds of players out, everybody else has to adjust. And in that adjustment, is it good enough to being able to get those things together is to apply yourself? So... You don't know who's going to come out of that. So I'll be watching that fifth game in Phoenix with my eyes wide open and to answer the question why. I'll be watching it intently to see who can come through and who can uh, make up for that not not having Devin Booker on that doggone floor. Hmm. Bro, my, my co-host Mike Bassick is going to be at the game tonight. And he is told he's sitting up in section three thirty four. Oh, yeah. He's he up in the upper deck. He's he's up there at the top, and he's going to be screaming. And he said, "Everybody behind me," which I don't know how many rows are behind him, but everybody behind me better just deal with it. I'm standing through the entire night. Uh, is that the only expectation for every fan in the arena tonight? Is you have to be standing the whole time? The thing about it is to let your voice be heard. Get out there and get out there and and scream. Let them that that does. That does affect lesser players. It, it affects players. It affects you. It affects you in that kind of a way. If you're not a tough-skinned, uh, a formidable-minded player, it it affects you. So if you're on the deficit of that, which is which is uh, Utah, hopefully it'll affect them and their shots. And the Mavs defense is playing hard, and everybody's screaming at that player. That that works, and it also it'll enhance the Mavs players to being able to do their job and to play with confidence, knowing that they're home and being able to uh, execute. That's the that's the biggest thing. Is to execute together, make the play that you're known for. So if you get an open shot, my man, bury it and uh, and put those things together. That's what's going to be important. But scream and let them know. I think I figured this out based on like everything it. that you've said. But I just want to confirm: what is your hype level for <laughs> yeah, tonight's game? He's pumped. What is my highest level? Hype what level. What is your <laughs> hype level for tonight? Oh, I'll be I'll be on the first floor running around. I mean, if you're talking about, oh, I'll be I'll be out there looking at the basketball game, running around, talking to the fans, enjoying 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 the fans, and uh, in different booths all throughout the all throughout the game. It's a it's a special thing. I get a chance to watch some of the game. I get a chance to go through 
some of the suites and talk to some of the some of the corporate people that are there and that kind of a thing. So I'm just hoping that that that, that we have uh, continued health and having the opportunity to have a have a bravado and a confidence that's a, that that's a taker's opportunity. Don't wait for anything to be given. Go take it. 